So we're going to start with the L3, L4 uh, endoscopic telith here right now. So we have a specimen here on the left side is the head, the uh, and here are the legs, um, the back is up here. Um, so we're going to do an endoscopic um, TLIF using the spinology cage. So first, uh, we're going to get an end plate view. So let's get a shot there, please. So uh, it's an AP x-ray. Then we go a lateral x-ray. So right now we're doing the planning. Do you have a pusher by chance? On the lateral x-ray, we want to see uh, you know, where the mid portion of the disc is. There we go. So, X-ray so, shot, roughly there, and then I go to this dorsal surface projection and go two thirds off midline. So this would be the 45 degree entry. I'd like to do a um, 30 degree entry, roughly. Then uh, skin knife, please. Hey, Chris, while yep. you're doing that, I mean, you can explain the transcambion. You're not ruining any bone in the foramen. Is that true? Yeah, so uh, basically, um, traditionally, endoscopic transcambion approaches, you know, we use a 45 degree angle. I like to go a little bit more medial. Um, you know, the reason for that is in order to um, have the cage being right in front um, at the midline of the epiphyseal ring. Uh, so uh, rather than coming in from the side. Uh, so let's get a shot there. So we go transcambion right now here. Uh, I'm going to put it right on the bone here, x-ray right here, um, and then we meld it. We meld it through the SAP, going trans-SAP. Okay, um, and uh, we'll go ahead and put a KY in there. And, and uh, Christoph, you, you're going trans-SAP because are you, you're concerned about the exiting nerve roots, so this makes you, gives you a safe zone? Yeah, so basically the Cambrian's triangle is much more is much wider uh, in the inferior aspect, and so going through the SAP gives you more space. Uh, that is really, you know, what um, you know, Dr. Wang's paper on the, uh, you know, uh, on the that it's not a triangle, uh, but really sort of like has four. Uh, it's uh, you prism. know a prism that you have to pay attention to the SAP. So let's go by an AP, and so by doing the trans SAP approach you uh, open up the triangle, basically. Um, and so that's why we go through there right now. So I'm just checking on the AP that I'm, um, you know, uh, on a nice and safe zone there. You see I'm right on top of the pedicle there. So here it says uh, that I can advance that here nicely, put that in, and let's go back to, uh, we can actually stay there. I'll do my reamers here. So uh, we're using the Tramax Crown reamers here right now, which is a very uh, safe and established system to do this. Um, and we'll just do one reaming step here right now because it's L3, L4. There's not a whole lot of reaming that needs to be done. Do the push here by chance. So here are all the dilators in place and then we use the crown reamer, go in counterclockwise, x-ray there and then clockwise through the SAP shot. And then have our dilators in there. Again, it's L3, L4, so a, the foramens are pretty large. Uh, now comes the uh, visualization part. So we basically go into the foramen x-ray, make sure that we get a view of the Camben triangle, make sure that the area of entry is free and that there's no nerve root there. Go and get that out. Can we uh, switch the view onto the endoscope? Okay, so we go in here right now. Babyflex. A little muscle tissue here. Pituitary. So, Christoph, I see some, you know, some uh, foraminal vessels that we typically see when you first enter into the, when you put your camera inside. Yeah, so, the, you know, there's some vessels in there. It's also sometimes some fruncal nerves in there, so some nerve roots. Uh, typically right on top of the Vapoflex, typically right on, on top of the pedicle in the Camden's triangle there right now, they are safe to remove. Um, 
so you saw that here's my reaming. Here, here's uh, a little bit of that reaming area that we did. Here's the bone right underneath there. Let's get a quick x-ray there. Okay, so you see that I'm right in the frame in here right now, and I'm on bone there right now. And give me the dilator one more time, the small dilator. What I'm going to do is right now, I just uh, drift, I have a little bit of muscle tissue, or like tissue in there. It's like a just frame and a ligament. Drop something in there and just go into this plane here right now. Can you push it down? Yeah. I'll just get the dilator down there one more time. Give me the dilator quickly. I just have some soft tissue in there. Perfect. Like Sark pointed out, there was a little bit of soft tissue right in front of me. Rather than removing it, I'll just dilate it around this thing. Shot there. See, so we're in the disk space there. Give it. All right, so the goal is here to uh, visualize the Kamen's triangle. And then here is the SAP up there, Vapofix, and the lateral recess here. Um, so I'm pointing this out to you in a second here right now. Here is SAP that is reamed. You can see it's very, very thin now. Here's the entrance into the lateral recess. And then up here is the pedicle. And then down there, we're going to go into the disk space. Here's the analysts that already opened up. So here is, uh, now we see the whole SAP that is reamed. Right behind is the ligament. Here's the analysts. And again, we went through there already, through the analysts, which is just totally fine. And up here is the fat around, surrounding the exiting nerve root right behind there. So now that you've visualized the Kambin's triangle, we can throw a K-bar in there on the vision. So now that we know that we are not hurting the exiting nerve root, we can put a K-bar in there and continue with the discectomy part. So now we've visualized the Kamen's triangle. And now we can go in there. X with them. You're deep enough. Do the next one. We're now bringing our dilators in there. Shot. Okay, next one. It's already in. Actually, uh, give me a quick, um, one second. Quick lateral. So you guys see the, the different steps, you know, with different dilators. Um, so now we get a lateral x-ray. Uh, we should be nice in the disk space. So we are right now in front, uh, exactly at the, if you still look at the AP, we are a little bit across midline, which is exactly where we want to be. Um, and then here we can advance this guy. Opposite. And so this is the, the working channel that is now in the disk space. You can advance it nicely. Shot. Okay, so you see that I'm in the disk space here right now, ready to go. We can have a little distance plate. The distance plate helps us uh, that we don't advance. Um, and then here's uh, a depth check x-ray. Can go a little further. Shot there. Even further than that. Shot there. Again, it's a big disc space here right now. One thing is really important with these endoscopic discectomies. They're the wand here. You see kind of how... how can you guys show my hands? So you kind of go up to reach the up of the disc, and then you go downward. So wanding is really, really important for these procedures because the axis is so tiny. Give me the loop current. Uh, and then now we take some disc material out. Okay. Uh, and then we have a whole slew of different curettes. Uh, so these are the curettes, and they are loop curettes, and they, they articulate 
you can see how they articulate here. We're going to go in a disk space, um, can engage them, and you get remarkable good tactile feedback doing that. And so you can really scrape along the end plates. And again, wanding here is really important. So right now I'm going to the L4 rostral end plate. I'm going to the L3 inferior end plate, wanding up there, engaging and scraping along those areas and delivering the disk material, elevating the disk. Uh, and again, wanding uh, the tube is really, really important. So Christoph, for, for the people who don't typically do endoscopic telos, I mean, like most endoscopic telos, is kind of like a percutaneous channel discectomy to start and do your rough discectomy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the channel, you know, it's, again, um, you saw that I used the drill at the very beginning, uh, and you have to be careful when it's very narrow, I use the drill backwards so that you don't dig into the end plate. So it's really important not to hurt the end plate right along the trajectory. And that's, I think, why it's also so important to do the wanding. This is another tool that is really cool. It's a down-pushing carat. So basically, uh, what we saw is when we did these endoscopic discectomies, that there's a lot of disc material um, basically protruding from the side along the, 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 the end of the working tube. And by having these down-pushers here, like uh, we can really clean up that, that area much, much better. So we go down there, engage in a disc space, and push down, and then when everything is, the disc is removed, you can see how I kind of go in and out and really get almost like in an open surgery, you can engage in a disc space and you start scraping those disc end plates. Um, now, endoscopic spine surgery is very non-forgiving, so we're going to put the endoscope then afterwards in and see our work, uh, which you typically don't do with MIS and open surgery. So uh, it's, uh, you, you will see how good of or bad of a job we did. And it's a big disk space. Pituitary. So now we're delivering some disk material the whole time. Oopsies. Just having a water flood here. You see big chunks of disk that are coming out here. They're all elevated. Um, and let's do the big crate one more time, and then we use the, the uh, there's brushes. And once the brushes are done, then we'll take a look, and then we're ready to deploy uh, deploy the cage. So you guys saw that you know it's a very very slick movement and approach. Uh, again, with complete with uh, foraminotomy or foraminoplasty, visualization of the Cambens triangle, entering of the Cambens triangle. And how much do we have right now? Hmm? Okay, all right. So we'll, uh, we'll deploy the cage in, in a couple minutes and then, okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, we're running out of time here a little bit here. Um, but, so this is to clean that cage area. Let's do one more. Okay, thank you. All right, and so now we put our endoscope in there and then we're ready to deploy. Uh, deploy it, let's do it a little bit more here so we have to see that. Christoph, do you want to show us the cage? Yeah, we'll put the cage in right now. I just want to put you want the, to show the camera on the cage, how the cage looks like so that everyone knows. That? How, you can maybe zoom into the cage before you put it in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just see here uh, quickly. Here's the disk space. So uh, end plate of, you can see the end plate prepped of uh, four. And the end plate prepped of, uh, up there is of three. Back here, again, there's still a little bit of material. So I would, you know, in a real case, I would spend another four or five minutes to remove that, but we're not going to do that right now. Here's the cage. Uh, it's a 3D expandable cage. Um, the spinology cage uh, that is a, a mesh, and you fill it with allograft. So now you put it in there. Get a shot there, x-ray. So we're all the way in. And the cage is in place. And then we have uh, allograft pre-filled cannulas. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, you can 
deploy the graph like this mallet. And left, can you left and right the images? Okay, so now we fill it up. Shot there. Okay, so you see that the graph is coming in in front. And is it a line? So this is the new model that is uh, called a line. And the difference to previous models, this one actually opens in a lodotic fashion. And uh, it is filled from ventral to dorsal and allows uh, not only to align with the patient's anatomy, but also to you know, uh, recreate the lodosis that the patient has. So, shot. So how does that work, Christoph? Is it the way it's woven? It's it that you can it's yeah, so it differentially has, it, fills? It has different chambers, and they fill first you fill the ventral chambers, and then you go to the back. So right now we fill the ventral chamber x-ray. And you can see, do you see how it lifts up? Can you go back and forward? So you see how the, the, the disc is, is lifting up in front. So you can probably... Can do the posterior? I think so. Um, or we can do one in the back, or... Oh, it's, it's okay. Let's just... We'd, Obviously, we could do more than that. We'll just want to, in the interest of time, we'll just do the posterior uh, chamber. Three lines here. Maybe four segments. Yeah. So how, how do you know you're done with the anterior chamber versus the posterior chamber? Yeah, so you actually have a, 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 a good amount of tactile feedback. And so now the cage is fully deployed. Uh, we can take everything out. Uh, Christoph, you, you went through that step very beautifully and very, but very quickly. Your posterior chamber required a separate tool, is that correct? Yeah, so it's a very, very good question. So um, the posterior chamber is, um, has basically a distance holder so that the graft, when you fill that, it's a little bit far more dorsal so that you deliver the graft right into the appropriate, um, into the appropriate um, chamber. So x-ray that. So now you see that the graft is in place. Uh, we actually got a, a nice amount of lidosis there. Um, let's get an AP. So we can assess a little bit of the footprint. Um, and typically you get almost like, you know, three centimeter wide graft in there. Uh, it's quite impressive in terms of uh, the footprint. All right, so you see that medial lateral extent. Uh, and I think that's a pretty nice graft. Again, could have done a little bit more discectomy, but you get, uh, you get the idea there. So I think that's the deployment of the Align Spinology cage uh, with, again, as we saw on APX, where you get really nice low doses. So thank you everyone for uh, taking a look and uh, happy to answer any questions. That was beautiful, Christoph. Thank you.